Intel Insights Podcast. As always, we've got your podcast host, Andy Park. We've got our founder and lead analyst of Intel Insights, Dane Itel. So, Dane, we're going to jump into the condo market today for the month of January. Absolutely. But before we do that, how was your last week, and uh, how did the conference go that we talked about? You know, the conference was really exciting. Uh, really some salient uh, thinking going on out there, especially from some of the speakers on, uh, on stage. You know, it's an interesting time in the equities world right now, and that was kind of the major impetus of, of the conference. Um, once again, Michael Campbell conference, really well done. Grant Longhurst, one of the producers there. Uh, it was a spectacular show. And it's interesting. I mean, the equities world is at a very interesting place right now. We're kind of at all-time highs. Uh, however, gold is similarly not near all-time highs, but near relative highs. So uh, there was a lot of uh, gold bugs and then uh, and some maybe naysayers about the intermediate uh, effect of the, how the market's going to project out. And then, of course, you had the other guys that said, you know, we got a 50,000 coming uh, point to the Dow. So it, it was very interesting. And, uh, yeah, I, I was really happy to be there and look forward to probably speaking there next year as well. Yeah, sounds good. And I would imagine some of our listeners were at that conference Absolutely. or maybe even ran into you. So For I, sure. No, it was good to see some of the people that were able to get tickets. I know yeah. that kind of by the time we pitched it, it was already sold out. Um, but you can kind of subscribe to after the fact and actually hear some of the speakers that were on stage. There was market timers of the year. Um, it, it was really, it, there was some, uh, some good points brought up that would maybe think, uh, make you think a bit more about how to invest your money and what's upcoming here in the near term future, let alone the long term future as well. Yeah, sounds good. So let's dive right into the condo data because everybody, you know, there's the, by proportion, there's a lot it's, more it's, condo holders. It's the biggest tax, market. Right? Yeah, you got exactly. It. So, um, if we take a look at the average sales price of condos, what happened in January and, uh, what was happening at the end of last year into that whole trend uh, well, hold? Yeah. I, I mean, as far as pricing goes, n nothing's changed really since September of 2019. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy how, how the data points just, just have not moved more than one and a half percentage points either way uh, since September. So currently the January data was 665,147, 665,000, um, which is down 11% from the market peak of January 2018, still far away from 751,000. Um, we'll just toss the chart up here for the for the uh, the audience, and, and, and as you can see, I mean, it's really created or, or 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 instilled itself in this divergent trend. Now that divergent trend seemingly is coming to an end. It's it's going to have to make a jump one way or the other. Uh, we would anticipate the movement to go uh, uh, south, and, and, and prices would decline. I'm sorry, Dan, uh, for the layman, could you just explain what a divergent trend sure, is? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So we got uh, basically kind of no price movement. We have lower highs. So so the uh, the, the September data point of 673,000 of September 2019 was kind of that intermediate high. And, and, and we see prices come in at 669 and, and, and 667, I believe, was actually another one. Mm -hmm. and, and similarly with the, with the data point in uh, October. It, w it was lower a and so that's we're seeing higher highs in the lows which mm -hmm. basically kind of comes to a combination of a, a sideways triangle mm -hmm. and again that's what you could see on, on the chart there and, and so once that's broken usually what happens um, it, it is a fairly violent move one way or the other because it's a resolution of uh, basically two quarters of non-movement so once you do see a resolution you well, what we would anticipate would be a move south like we say um, possibly a test of the lower middle threshold. And, and, and again, in this market, we, we, we do uh, basically point out market cycles, right? We identify them. We show you when markets maybe overbought and at its zenith and, and maybe when it's maybe too low. We're definitely not too low from where we see the market going right now. Mm -hmm. So prices at 665, uh, the, the, you know, the lower uh, anticipated echelon test would be around 640. Okay. The market basically throughout 2019 bounced off the 640 tested 650 and said you know what we're worth more and it shot up to 675 again in september 673 so that's what we kind of expect to happen here again in 2020 is a retest of that 640 threshold which it would be the lower end uh, uh, of this middle threshold of, of the current market cycle and and once that is retested we, we think it'll be broken basically because it's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back you know okay we, we i held ground for you here last year we shot you up to 673 if you couldn't get higher on your own volition that's up to you you know you come back you ask me to hold the market here again at 640 650 the market will attempt to hold but ultimately you will see that overweight where it has to go lower and, and the market has to correct itself at a, at a lower price point 
that you know the next echelon would would basically be right around that 550 threshold or 575 sorry and and, and then ultimately down to 525 which is actually where we see this market totally correcting to which is a, a an absolute correction from top to bottom of 30 percent from 751 in january 2018 to an anticipated price of 525 call it early to middle of 2021 okay. so we're still very much in the midst of this market correction um, and, and, and we'll get into probably about what, you know, sellers and buyers could and should do here uh, going forward. So, sorry, Dane. Sure. So just for some perspective here, um, we're, um, where are we right now with the average uh, condo price? And uh, you're saying Itel Insights predicts kind of uh, bottom at around 525? Correct? Right. Okay. So, so what, what's the, the delta there? Yeah. yeah. So right now we're at 665. So okay. yeah. So there's 665 to 525. Like absolutely. 140 grand still okay. or 130 grand still to come. Okay. Um, and, and what's, I mean, and on top of that, so we still do have further equity gains. If you hold off in the purchase, you got further equity losses if you're a current owner, right? Or investor or, or I mean, probably the worst case of all is those multiple purchasers of the pre-sale markets. Mm -hmm. Like those guys are, I mean, unfortunately they're absolutely about to get crushed. Right. Uh, you know, not, it, it, it's a colloquial term. It's, it's a, it's an economic term. I, I don't mean this as a vivid term, but I mean, there will be blood on the streets here in this condo pre-sale market when it actually comes to completion, uh, mm -hmm. attempts to, to sell products. You know, I mean, I personally have clients that bought penthouses and, and they're just coming to completion. Um, and they're underwater and they're saying, Dane, what do we do with it? I'm going, well, I mean, it's a penthouse. It's got view. It's, a, it's got some unique features. The value will come back. If you, if you want to sell it, you have in a unique feature because it's penthouse. But if you're any of the 18 floors below you, you're just one of the many that's going to go to the market. So, you know, we can advise you on, on probably how to hold it for the best uh, means so that you can get a return or we can hook you up with one of the ITEL Insights preferred clients, right? Unfortunately, we were in there on the purchase side of it or else we probably would have advised him to stay away from it and just not gotten himself into this uh, situation that he is currently in. So uh, that, that being said, uh, again, to, to your kind of point about what's the, the, uh, the alpha or the delta, yeah, we, we, we got uh, some serious significant losses upcoming um, and, and there have already been. So we, we were down at the, at the majority, uh, roughly 13%. We were down at 650 and, and now we're a little bit higher than that at 11% do anticipate a rough total correction of, of 30% when it is all said and done, likely in 2021. Okay. Um, so with price movements, the kind of uh, corresponding chart that's always interesting is the inventory one, right? right. So uh, it looks like we've seen some inventory has fallen recently. Is that correct? Or yeah. Right? Um, so we'll just toss that up here again. And, and, and basically what's happened, I mean, kind of to our overall theme of the last quarter or so, the inventory has been falling. What's interesting about that is um, those that have been following us, and you can obviously check out uh, our, our historical podcast, in September, not so coincidentally, when this divergent trend jumped and, and then kind of stayed very tightly range bound, is when in September 2019 is when we actually broke out of this aggressive uptrend in the inventory. So from January to uh, January 2018, December of 2017, inventory basically was at the lows and, and just completely shot up to roughly 6,000 listings again. And, and after that point, we're, we're seeing a significant pullback. Now, as we get further, we'll talk about days on market and, and the sales numbers, of course. What, what we're seeing is that uptrend was really not sustainable unless there was going to be, you know, 10,000, 12,000, 20,000 condos uh, uh, available on the market. So eventually that market had to be corrected. And it was right around where that middle threshold of the overall average inventory throughout Greater Vancouver the last 15 years has been, stands to reason. Now, as we get into the sales, uh, you'll see what we mean by this. This fall off in inventory is not due to frenzied buyers or, 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 or any capacity of that. It's really due to, and as we get into the days on market, buyer or sellers that have just simply given up for a quarter and, and there's still a need to sell. So it's not like they're just gonna go away and, and life's gonna get better. They're gonna have to come back to this market. What we believe is, is what, what we believe has occurred and is occurring is a reassessment, a, a revaluation of what's gonna happen with their property. How am I going to sell it? Because obviously I couldn't sell it before. Um, I'm taking Christmas off. There's not too many sales during Christmas, all that seasonal stuff, all well and true. And maybe they need a new agent because the agent that promised them X, now they're offering them Y and saying they should take it. Well, how did you promise me X, but now we're offering Y? 
course, the markets change, but maybe don't promise X. Right, right. <laughs> and that's what the ITEL Insights preferred realtors do offer is a tangible uh, 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 conversation about where the market is and, and how the competition is going to affect you. Right now, with this limit uh, limited inventory, I mean, if you got to sell, I'd be putting it on last week. You got no competition, relatively speaking, compared to where we go back up to 6,000, 7,000. 8,000 active listings by the time all these completions, 9,000 mm -hmm. by the time we yeah. all these completions show up. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be exponential, right? So I would be putting my property on the market, especially if it's nothing unique. Honestly, having a one bedroom, unless it's something penthouse, which they don't really make too many penthouse yeah. one bedrooms, yeah. right. <laughs> it's not that unique, right? right? So you do have to get it on the market at a, at, at a salient price. Now, what's kind of crazy about the salient price, today's salient price is much, much higher than what a year is going to be from now, what six months is going to be from now. Because not only is the prices, literally as we just got off of the average sale price, still hovering around 665, but there's no inventory, relatively speaking. So if you're in there at an attractive price, there are some segment of demand. Is it the demand of the pent up that we saw that transpired in 2019? I don't think so, but there's still always a need to purchase and sell in Greater Vancouver. There's an old adage that 30 to 40% of the market is always moving. So we want to capture that 30%. There's no 100% investment anymore that there was a few years ago, yeah. right? So, I mean, if, you, if you're in a position where you're thinking that you're going to need to sell, I, I'd be selling right now. I'd be getting in touch with ITEL Insights. Send us an email. We'll hook you up with a preferred realtor in your area that'll give you some tangible advice on how to actually get the job done, which is to get you some cash for your equity in the property. And then they'll have a buyer that fills that up mm -hmm. not every buyer i mean specifically i mean across the market not every buyer has the buyer mentality that we kind of decipher here they have a need-based buying mentality they got to live somewhere if they moved up from saskatchewan or something like that however it may be there's a, there's an extra child there's a, there's a lot of different market movements and that's probably that 30 to 40 percent right so that's kind of who we're trying to captivate uh is that need-based buying that will still always stay However, the scary thing is when need-based selling shows up and all you have is need-based buying to kind of mitigate that, that that's, that's a recipe for disaster. Right, right. There's a pretty big disconnect there. So, Absolutely. Um, just, I mean, while you're talking about ITEL Insight Services, sure. um, people want to get a little bit more information about the charts that they're seeing on the screen and maybe how it might actually apply to their specific properties. Can you right. talk a little bit about your off-the-shelf services that you have? Yeah, there? absolutely. So here what we speak about is the Greater Vancouver average numbers. Now, what makes up the Greater Vancouver is basically, you know, 20 plus areas, right? Mm -hmm. So you got your Burnaby's, your Coquitlam's, your New Westminster's, your Vancouver's, all of the Vancouver's, your East, your West, your North, your, you know, yeah. I mean, all of them, right? Yeah. So that's what we offer for the 250 dollars say that you're interested in a detached property in north vancouver um for 250 dollars we'll give you the historical chart inventory sales and, and additional than what we actually show here of, of course the days on market as well um but also the exponential moving averages and some relative index studies so you, you'll really be kind of even if you're a layman um as, as you stated earlier about a, a specific market after you purchase a report, you're pretty much on par with us. You'll know everything where the market's trending, how it's going to actually react. And here's the interesting thing. Um, some, uh, some realtors, let's say, don't know how the market's reacting. So our clients actually go and say, hey, the market's going down, the realtor will laugh. But then we have statistical evidence that say it's gone, going down, it's already been down. And they're saying, yeah, but it's going to turn around any second. The unfortunate side of that um, is the market's not fully at the bottom yet, right? right. So when the market is the bottom is when we're going to get all of these discounts. It's uh, unfortunate that we know it's going there, but we can't actually achieve that price today. So the only time thing that we can kind of w is, do wait. It, 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 is exactly that. It, we, we, we just got to wait. But with these charts, you get to kind of identify of how long you have to wait. Some markets, specifically in the detached market, uh, as we said in our last podcast, are closer to their bottoms. There's not too many condo markets that are close to their bottoms. Just a, uh, a stagnant uh, comment or uh, uh, overall comment would be don't buy, yes, sell. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? But uh, more specifically of h how much of a degree do you have to sell by? That's where you would get the, you know, the, the report. And, and then, of course, how much more expectation do I have to wait in terms of time to see these total price losses come to the condo market so I can actually purchase? Mm -hmm. Now, um, one thing going back to the the the, the uh, money uh, uh, Michael Campbell's uh, Money Talks Outlook conference, 
you know, there, there was a real estate speaker on there. Uh, we we, we uh, actually disagree with a lot of what he said and, and agree with some of what he said. You know, I mean, Gra Greater Vancouver long term is a great bet. Uh, absolutely agree. It's a finite area of land. Absolutely agree. Uh, and, and he even said market cycles exist, I believe, for the first time ever, which is probably a, a little tip of the cap to us, but we appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> where we disagree is you can buy any time and, and have a 20-year outlook. Uh, let, let's just kind of take this example. I mean, so far we're down you know, 11%. We're going to go down a, a total of $225,000 for, for the yeah, condo for condos. market. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and 450000 for the detached market. So if, if you bought at the peak, now you have to wait for the market cycle bottom to show up, which isn't exactly a, a, a joyous occasion to see serious equity loss to, you, to your capital wealth. And, and then it's going to have to revitalize itself just to be at mitigation point. Then you're going to have to wait another trench of time to see it exponentially grow. We say that we can time this market <laughs> much better than that. We don't buy near market tops. We actually sell into them. We buy near market bottoms, and then we hold through the next echelon to see that next echelon of a market top. Then we'll sell into that for an investment theory. Um, of course, buying and selling in a similar market, and that's what you kind of see going on here in the condo and the detached market. That's why sales will always occur. Yeah, I mean, I got out of one condo, I got into a two-bedroom condo. I got out of the two-bedroom condo into a townhouse. I got out of the townhouse into a detached property. So as long as you do and buy and sell within a similar time frame, you will do okay. That's where you do have a 20-year thesis. However, even so that being said, mm -hmm. we can still kind of skin the cat in a multitude of ways. The detached market was down close to uh, a 20, well, it was down 408, or, uh, down to uh, one48 which is roughly 20% 20, 20 off of the peak, and, and while well, the condo market is only 11%. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, we could sell our condo at 11% loss, pick up a detached property at a 20% loss, and we're already ahead of the game. Now, we're not advising doing that because there's still further losses in the detached market in specific places. However, in others, yeah, now's the time to get rid of the condo and enter the detached market. When it all comes back, you're gonna get the 11% that you lost in the condo market after you've seen all these other losses come in, or just the realization of 24%. And the percentages are absolutely different when you capitalize it out into how much money that is. You know, mm -hmm. on a $1 million asset versus a $500,000 asset, percentages are the same. However, your return on your investment is very different. So okay. not, not yeah. to, not, I, 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 I digress. I'll give it back to you. I'll let you take over again. Okay. <laughs> so just uh, in the interest of the few minutes that we have left, let's see if I can deftly execute an effective segue back into the data that we were talking Sounds about in buddy. January. So if we're looking at a smaller asset class that ranges in the $500,000 mark, like a Vancouver condo, and we want to see how many sales are happening month to month to see if the timing gets better for us. What that was deaf. last month. That was deaf, <laughs> by that, that was slick. Sure. Um, <laughs> so not bad if I say so myself. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Um, and yeah. there's two of us, so hopefully yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. we'll get a couple of comments. You yeah, never know. That's right. Yeah. Um, so the sales are they're, they're back down to kind of nominal uh, levels. January. I'll just toss the chart up here. Uh, January basically showed up at 815 sales, which. I mean, it, again, it's nominal. It's higher than January of 2019, which was at 559. Now the oddity, I mean, last month, whoa, the board, the analysts, the, you know, the, 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 uh, it, it's coming back any minute, folks. We're saying 88% increase sales year over year. Well, I mean, the sales are much, much better or are, are, are similarly better year over year from 559 up to 815. Whereas the, the touting of 50%. Well, they don't tout it because last month they said it was 88. Right. So, of course, you can't say it's 50. That sounds like a 30% loss. Right. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And that's, a, again, why we stick with very uh, similar data points. I mean, not similar. The exact same data points, the exact same charts, month to month. We'll show you them all. We, we, we got nothing to hide. Uh, will sales occur? Absolutely. Will sales, could sales occur to that green uptrend that is on the chart? No way. Yeah. That is, again, stress test mitigation. Is it to the same degree as the detached properties? Mm -hmm. No. The overall market in the detached market was down 18%. The condo market last year was down 13%. Expect this year to be probably down around 20%. Um, and, 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 and so that's where you'll see the more sales take place, again, by need-based. Um, but the, the need-based selling for the for the, for, uh, the inventory will, will definitely be showing up. As, and, and I mean, you can almost turn the switch as soon as there's a, a new completion. 
you, you'll see inventory. Uh, again, going to you know some of the the clients that we 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 represent now, maybe a little bit too late for their portfolio, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, it, it's how do I how do I get out of this bad spot, right? And it's there's need based buying again, but not nearly to the amount of need based selling. He says it's unfair because I bought penthouse that the first nine floors got to sell before I did. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what are we comparing? That's apples right. and oranges, but right. he's still kind of ticked off to the fact that they were completed before he was so that they got the first jump to the market. Right. Well, if that's not an indicator, I, I, I really don't know what it is. A, a penthouse property being jealous of a third floor unit. Right. It's right, interesting. Right, right. <laughs> okay. So uh, before we sign off, can you make a comment on the days on market and are we going to see it go down despite the kind of potential increased inventory and the sales numbers that we're seeing? Absolutely. So yeah. we'll just toss that up there as you're finished. Um, trying to keep us pressed for time. I, yeah, I, sure I, I, I see the sense you're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what's actually interesting with the days on market, I do actually anticipate this chart to kind of uh, maybe even test the low end of this range. So currently in the January market, we saw 43 days on market on an average, which is lower than the previous month, which is basically the highs that we saw since 2015. Um, now, why that is, that's because you will see these properties that have gone off market, the few guys that are, or the few, maybe not guys, but guys or gals or folks that are serious about getting out of this market, yeah. they're, they're going to list their properties at an achievable price and they'll actually sell. Mm -hmm. So that'll help. And again, this chart that you're seeing isn't average days on market for the whole market. This is average days on market for the sellable properties, the ones that actually sold. As soon as a property sells, it adds to this number. If it doesn't sell, it never does. Right. So you can imagine the days on market for the overall market. Yeah. Holy smokes, right? Yeah. So that that's where, and these are the the halves of the market, the the, 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 the benefactors, the, the glorious position folks, yeah. the ones that actually got to sell their property. So yes, we will see this probably diminish from 43 and, and, and test a higher, a higher low than we saw at, at the previous lows. Um, but again, probably going into the seasonal months later into 2020, you'll, you'll see it back at, at all time new highs where we even surpassed where we were at before, or at the very least test. Um, and, and we could see possibly basically an, a, an upward trajectory with, a, with an artificial top. And then in 2021, see that thing broken absolutely loose. So, mm -hmm. it, 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 I mean, the chart will actually tell, the, the market will tell us how this is going to play out, but uh, anticipate some... Uh, days on market lowering, the prices lowering, the inventory starting to climb, and the sales r remaining, but uh, not in uh, step and lock with the amount of inventory coming to the market. All right. Great stuff as always, Dane. Very well researched, very well communicated. So if you found this useful, please give us a thumbs up. Give us a smash button. Get, smash the subscribe button. There you go. And make sure you turn your notifications on too. So when we uh, post a new video, you'll get an alert on your phone. So Absolutely. And, and one other thing, I mean, feel free to share it. I mean, honestly, put, put it on your Facebook groups. Put it on your uh, your social media. We're, we're not exactly the best at social media. I mean, it, it, it's <laughs> not my ilk, but uh, we do attempt. And also visit itellinsights.com. We actually just put up a new market update slash blog section. And directly from those, you can tweet it out. You can add it to your own social media accounts as well. So hopefully you enjoyed it and check out what we got. All right. Thanks, everyone, as always. And we'll see you on the next one.